Jerry Mallory here for SB Nation and PrivateTroy.com. Love talking about the Lions, especially after a win. They went down to Jacksonville, defeating the Jaguars, or is it the Jaguars? I don't know. They defeated the Jacksonville Jags at a final score of 31-14. to This is as close to a flawless game as you're going to find. Now, admittedly, I expected the Lions to win this one, so my game plan was if they did win, I would still kind of watch this game from a critical standpoint, uh, putting on my professor glasses, uh, tr trying to extract negative aspects of the game, and uh, to be quite truthful, I'm hard pressed to find negative aspects about this game. Now granted, you had the Young brothers, Willie and Titus Young Sr., uh, Titus with a few drops, Willie Young with some penalties. Aside from that, and those were two minor aspects of the game, aside from those uh, minor hiccups, these guys moved the ball on offense and they stopped the running pass on defense as good as we've seen them all this year. Now, the Jaguars only won one game. But their defense has been a lot better. They held Green Bay in check just the week before. And so anytime you get a win of this magnitude, being on the road, playing as nearly perfect as you, as you did, uh, you have to be pleased with the output. Uh, the running game, I think that's the uh, biggest aspect that you have to be pleased with. Both Joyke Bell and Mikael Shore ran the ball good over 70 yards. Mikael Shore told you guys he's a viable fantasy running back because on any given week he can find the touchdown. He found it three times this week, so you have to be pleased with that. One of the biggest keys, though, is the fact that they were able to run the ball on short yardage situations. If it's a third and one, if it's first or second and goal on the two or three yard line, traditionally the Lions don't do well. They have to pass. I've said it once, I'll say it again. They have a pass blocking offensive line. Dominic Rayola, undersized. Today, that was not an issue. On the goal line, whether it's on the one-yard line, the two-yard line, they punch the ball in. They can continue to do that. This sets up the play action. This allows the playbook to be expanded when it's third and short or even second and short. And this team can find that balance that Scott Linehan has been desperately seeking. The usual suspects were good. Matthew Stafford, very efficient. No touchdowns, but no interceptions. Spread the ball around. Ryan Broyles. He's probably one of the better route runners you're going to see out of a young receiver. He reminds me of Wes Welker and Calvin Johnson over 100 yards. Defense, they got stops when they needed it. They got turnovers when they needed it. The 14 points, you can almost negate that. To me, this was a shutout, non-shutout. They gave up two touchdowns when it was late. They gave up two touchdowns when they were more concerned about the clock running out then stopping Jacksonville. When they needed stops early on, they didn't allow those momentum shifts to uh, take place. Like I've mentioned before, offensive score touchdown, they are forcing a three and out. And so that is huge. The first half of the season is now over. They're at four and four. Admittedly, this is a little bit disappointing. I look back at two games that I feel as though they should have won against Tennessee and against Minnesota. Our special teams were a horrible both of those games, and we could be looking at 6-2 and two right now, because I'll tell you guys, the second half of this year is going to be tough. You've got Green Bay twice, you've got Houston, you've got Minnesota again, you've got Chicago, you've got Atlanta. This was probably the half of the year, the first half to go 6-2, and two, because these last eight games, to me, if they play well, they can win four, maybe five if they play extremely well. Uh, these are some tough matchups. So if you go six and two in the first half, or you go four and four, maybe five and three, you're in the playoffs. Now, they're going to have to win games they're supposed to lose, but they can do it. They lost some games they're supposed to win, so they have to reverse that in the second half. But enough of that. We will talk about the future and the halfway point later this week. As of right now, we're going to enjoy this win, at least for the evening. Uh, they're leaving Jacksonville, and now they have the second half to look forward to. What was your favorite play of the game? We'll be coming back later this week talking about that as well. Your comments as a whole uh, for the first half. Are you pleased with the running game? Do you see the future in Mikael DeShore and Ryan Broyles? I sure do. Well, that's going to do it for today, guys. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. Leave your comments. If you have not subscribed, shame on you. But I will give you an opportunity to do it right now. Until then, though, as always, this has been Jerry Mallory for SB Nation and PrivateTroit.com.